until you were placed under house arrest, you moved around a lot. You've led a very nomadic lifestyle, moving around from city to city, country to country. Um, why? I think this is something that Australians do. There is a cultural and genetic uh, love uh, for travel, a sort of restlessness uh, that is in many Australians, and I have that. You're not doing it because you're afraid, of your own sa afraid for your own safety? Mostly not. Uh, mostly it's to do with opportunity. There's an opportunity to do something in Kenya, I go to, go to Kenya, or there's a, an opportunity to do something in France, so I'm in France. There, there is a sort of reality that um, when you're involved in, in information that spy agencies are also interested in, and that spy agencies uh, then are motivated to spy on you, uh, if you're in a lo one location uh, for too long, uh, and that location is not isolated uh, or very well secured, then it is inevitable that that location will be bugged uh, and bugged very aggressively. We do have to be concerned about uh, preventing spy agencies from uh, infiltrating us electronically, physically. So one of the ways to deal with that is to make sure things are distributed and no, nothing is kept in the one place for too long. Have you been concerned about your safety? I've been concerned about uh, all uh, our staff's safety from time to time. Um, uh, in, in Kenya um, in 2007, uh, there was a, a raid on my compound by uh, six uh, armed men uh, that seemed to have something to do with uh, the developing election in Kenya. We had uh, two uh, human rights lawyers uh, who were associated with uh, my work uh, were assassinated in broad daylight. Uh, we've had many, many uh, death threats uh, by senior and very influential people in the United States, uh, such as Sarah Palin calling uh, for me to be hunted down like the Taliban, calls to have uh, alleged sources executed, uh, calls to have um, ca uh, car bomb put in my car, uh, 